My name is Charles Innes, and I'm the Associate Veterinarian for New England Aquarium. Among veterinarians, there's not that many that get the chance to spend all of their time working in, with aquarium animals. And then I'm also involved with some local freshwater turtle conservation projects. Some of the freshwater turtles that are native to Massachusetts are threatened or endangered species. And it's not really aquarium related business, but it's in the same general vein. And so we are doing some work with some of the Massachusetts fish and wildlife folks. Because of my turtle interests, I've been, uh, uh, been able to work with a lot of other turtle people from around the world. And there are a lot of scientific programs and conservation programs involving turtles that I've been able to get involved with. Um, at my home, I have lots of turtles that I, I work with, and some of them are there because they're my pets and I like them, but some of them are there because they are species that are traditionally difficult to maintain in captivity, and I'm trying to develop techniques to keep those species alive. The majority of sea turtle strandings on Cape Cod occur in November and December, and it's usually turtles that came here during the summer months when the weather was warm and the water was warm and the food was good. So the turtles that stay here too long end up getting trapped in that little arm of the cape. And when they get cold enough, their body temperature goes very down because they're not able to generate their own body heat. And so when they get to be about 50 degrees or so, they're no longer strong enough to be able to swim on their own. And they wash up on the beaches of the cape. We've discovered that you can't warm them up too quickly or else you cause a lot of metabolic derangements and they can die from that. So they live in this incubator which we can set at a specific temperature. You can see it's at 53 degrees right now. And we raise them by about 5 degrees every day that they're here until they get to be about 75 degrees. Some of those turtles are dead already when we get them, but the majority of them are alive and we then institute a variety of uh, emergency care treatments for them. They tend to be very dehydrated when they get here. Their heart isn't beating very rapidly. See, like, Sometimes they only have one heartbeat per minute. So they're in really bad condition when we get them and we have over the years developed a protocol that's been very successful at rehabilitating. About 80% of them um, go on and do well. late July or August when the water temperatures are warm enough. We release them off the southern coast of the Cape. Lately we've been using a beach in Osterville uh, with the idea that if we put them in the Cape Cod Bay they're just going to get stuck again so we put them on the south side so that they can just head south immediately. And a lot of those turtles we do put little satellite transmitters on their back and so we can monitor their, uh, their travels over time and we have records of several, several turtles traveling a few thousand miles after we release them, so we believe that they're doing okay. We don't know exactly how old turtles can live. There are pretty reliable records of turtles that can be over a hundred years, and we know that we have one turtle in our giant ocean tank named Myrtle, who is a big green sea turtle. She has been here for 40 years, and she was at another aquarium before this for about 20 years, and she was full grown when they got her, which takes about 20 years. And so she could easily be 80 or 100 years old. We don't really know. Now for dolphin and whale strandings, it's not really known entirely what causes that. There are some theories about global warming, or you might have heard some of the theories about the Navy having sonar that's you know, damaging their ability to navigate. We don't really have any proof for that sort of thing at this point. It's a wide open field and I would encourage kids that are pursuing a field in a career in the field of biology to investigate all the possibilities. I think that I was very set on being a veterinarian and I don't think that I completely pursued what all of the other opportunities would have been. There's people out there that spend uh, their days out on boats doing field surveys of whales and there's people that are you know scuba diving in the seas of the South Pacific and all sorts of cool things. These guys are both volunteers. I, I do want to emphasize to you in some way that the majority of our work here is a team effort. I don't do everything by any means and uh, the most of the work is done by a combination of our department, the uh, aquarists that do the daily care of the fish, 
the divers that have to go in and scrub the tank and feed all the fish in there. And we also have a huge volunteer force and we couldn't do what we do without a really large network of volunteers um, like these guys that are feeding the turtles today right now.